Well, Kunle Solaja joins us right now, and um, let's um, uh, get his opinion. Um, it's the end of um, Persiero's um, era, um, as far as um, football is concerned in Nigeria. And um, some say, um, on his CV, um, Nigeria will always come top, as um, he was indeed um, a successful man in the final um, reign as um, the Super Eagles manager. What's your take on them, the latter days of Persiero and the way forward? Well, uh, everything is very subjective, depending on the way we look at it. If we look at his record in Nigeria, I think that is the best ever he has ever uh, achieved. Uh, because throughout his playing career and coaching career, he never won any silverware. And if we had won that uh, Africa Cup of Nations final match against uh, Cote d'Ivoire, it would have been a very, very big score for him because that would have been his very first silverware. You remember, he has always been an assistant to others. Uh, he was uh, an assistant at uh, Real Madrid and he was overwhelmed by the caliber of players he saw. As a matter of fact, in an interview he had with uh, uh, Sky Sports, he was so, uh, I mean, he actually said that being in the same locker room with such big player was a big achievement for him. So that shows you the caliber of coach he was. And But here in Nigeria, we don't always go for the best, maybe because of the problem we always have, having the resources to pay them. So that has always been a big headache for us. And it's also because we don't have any plan. We just find ourselves in a situation and we just allow the tide to carry us. The next international window is just some 11 days away. We have actually lost out with that. And then the, ne the next match, the Super Eagles will be played, will be a competitive one and decisive one for that matter. Because match day three and four are so crucial to the prospects of the Super Eagles. Uh, qualify for the World Cup. And it will be a very big tragedy if after the World Cup was enlarged and Africa now has at least nine confirmed slots, we still cannot find, uh, we still cannot qualify. That is a very, very, that would be a very, very big tragedy for us. But by and large, I don't think uh, Pesero was the coach we needed as at the time we got him. And his uh, scorecard also showed that Pesero was not the coach that Nigeria actually deserved. Save for two matches, I mean, two teams, that is uh, Cameroon that we beat 2-0, and uh, uh, what's the name of this other country? Sao Tome and Principe, that we beat 6-0, and 10-0 and 6-0. Throughout his tenure in Nigeria, we never beat any team with a margin more than a goal. And that shows that despite the fact that Nigeria is believed to have a lot of uh, potent strikers and all those things, it's a tragedy that for nearly two years, we struggled to win matches. Now, um, from what we've seen so far, um, what is the way forward? Um, the Nigerian Football Federation denied reports that um, Serezwe Guavuin will be stepping in as the man who heads the technical committee, um, the technical department of um, the Football Federation. And then, um, just like you said, crucial matches ahead. And then um, it's time to indeed know who will take Nigeria um, to the promised land. Uh, and the promised land in this case is the Project 2026 People World Cup. What's the way forward? Well, the way forward, first and foremost, is that the NFM got the old thing wrong. Once a coach steps down or a coach resigns or you fire a coach, you ought to, communication is key. You come out openly and make a categorical statement. All we have had so far was Pesero going to, uh, to the Twitter or to the X handle to announce that he is no longer the Super Eagles coach. But the good thing there is that we didn't have any penalty to pay this time around. At least the contract ran out. But communication is key. You have to tell Nigerians, if this coach has stepped aside, now what is the next thing? We are searching for a new coach. Or we have put somebody in charge in the interim. 
So everything was just left at the realm of rumor, speculations, and guesswork, and everybody trying to advance the cause of any person that they are putting forward. So that shows disorganization in the body called the Nigerian Football Federation. They ought to have come out, at least with a statement, even if it's just a one-sentence statement. Oh, wow. The contract of this coach has ended. There's no agreement on whether we are, uh, we are going to renew it or not. But in the interim, because there must never be a vacuum, and that's where we got, I mean, we are always getting to wrong. Look at Morocco, for instance. They crashed that unexpectedly at the quarterfinals. And by the second day or the third day, they've held a meeting with the coach and they decided to, uh, to continue with him. And they, call, they came out with a statement on that, that, okay, right. based on this and this, this coach, Walid, will continue. And we hope that between now and the next summer, when we hope to host the next Africa Cup of Nations, All right. you will have this right. I must say very big thank you, Kunle Solaja, for indeed um, highlighting um, all this. Many thanks for talking to Ross. Um, time that our friend on the show.